This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's talk about uh, the our August 10th, 1992 edition of The Observer. Quote, Terry Taylor is definitely through and is trying to get back with the WWF or indie dates. He was offered a spot to come back under a hood as Mr. Wrestling 3, the protege of Mr. Wrestling 2, but it isn't going to materialize. Did you ever hear that creative Mr. Wrestling 3? Uh, casually. It was never seriously considered. It, again, it was a way they're reaching out, searching, looking for a new presentation for Terry Taylor. You still got the same guy that has the same skill set that can have great matches with anybody. Uh, but he's got to be repackaged again. And some can obviously go back and say like me, if I wanted to stand on that, on that box and shout to the stars, that damn red rooster killed him. I don't know that to be true. All I know is, is that, uh, because of Terry's ability to work that he was constantly being repackaged or reevaluated so they can get him back in the game in a, in a viable way. And that really never, that was never really accomplished. I don't think Taylor heads back to the WWF and you don't see him again until you wind up there in April of 93. Had he already transitioned by that point to being a broadcaster and sort of a backstage interviewer at that point, or was that after your back? As far as you recall, I think that that was, that plan was in, in works, you know, uh, he had a great appearance, looked good, well-spoken had great product knowledge. So I think that was probably in his, uh, his forte. Again, I, I always seen saw Terry as more of a heel right? in those years. Uh, he would have been, a, I think he would have become an excellent manager. Uh, if he, if that route had been taken, uh, but a wrestling heel is uh, something he could do very well. But, uh, you know, at that point, Terry was just trying to you know, had a special needs sons. Uh, you know, his wife was in poor health. I think his primary focus was just to maintain steady checks and not focus so much on his, uh, aspirations his, as a wrestler. Yeah. His role at that point in time, take what they give you and make it really, really good. And I thought he could have been really, really good as a heel manager or a heel commentator. I want to mention that, uh, best I can tell his last match with the WWF in 93 was August 14th in Hartford, Connecticut. He was in the first match against Bob Backlund, but the match that he had right before that August 6th, I think wound up being Brutus beefcakes last match in the WWF when they were, uh, across the pond on a tour. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, from your perspective, how the whole thing was handled with Jim Crockett and and Bill Watts, as far as the talent trade, you know, now that the talent's here, it feels like you've been through this twice, you know, once a generation later, Vince McMahon acquires a lot of WCW talent and the WWF talent essentially squashes them. And it feels like dusty did it a generation before here. And I think Terry maybe saw the writing on the, on the wall. And even though he's getting a win on TV on WTBS here, he's going to just jump ship to Memphis seemingly out of nowhere. And he's put over on television in a tag team match with Eddie Gilbert was, was he just phoning a friend to Eddie Gilbert, seeing if he could get a spot in Memphis and Hey man, I don't like my creative. You've often said it comes down to cash and creative was Terry unhappy with the cash. Was he unhappy with the creative or both? Can't say about the cash. Uh, I'm sure he wanted to make more money. Sure. Uh, and they weren't on such big downside guarantees then that you didn't care if you were drawing money or whatever, cause you're on salary uh, and a handsome salary. Uh, I don't think that was the issue. I don't, I don't think the money, but I think creative young guy, he didn't want to destroy the foundation of what he had built and just to be jobbed out on television and lose every week or, or, and I have, or, I even have matches where he would go over, but his opponent would not sell. It was just, it sucked That's this ego and the, and the wrong advice, I think come from the home office. Uh, so, and, and, and Terry had a good relationship with, with Eddie Gilbert, you know, Eddie, Eddie was the, Eddie was going to be the booker of UWF when, uh, we sold and that's, that, 
Eddie Gilbert was angry at me for many years about that, unfortunately, because that was his big opportunity to book a, a big territory. It's his dream job to be the booker. And, uh, and I, and I think he would have been a great book. Uh, but you know, it's just not how it worked out. Unfortunately, politics is tough, man. Yeah. You know, there, there's politics nowadays, immense politics because of the immense salaries, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt gets cut. He's, he's gotta be making North of a million uh, on a downside guarantee. And he's been sent home. That's not good management. Right. And I, I'm not saying the guy should have been cut, but you should have been, he should have been used. If you're going to pay him that kind of cash and how that happened is, uh, I guess, probably a story for another day. Cause I don't know the details. I know that they got rid of a very talented kid. Uh, and I'm sure he won't have any issues finding work. Speaking of uh, Bray Wyatt. So anyway, uh, Taylor going, leaving the mid Atlantic. I think he just got tired of being jerked around creatively. I mean, just a short story answer. Creative discontent was a bit Terry Taylor in the ass. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.